Hello and welcome to the Feisty News for Women. I am T. Erica. I present important women's issues and fearless feminine voices disrupting our society. Today is June 13th, 2022. Here is the Feisty News for Women. According to CNN, retailers CVS and Walgreens, as well as major manufacturer Procter & Gamble, reported a shortage of tampons and other period products. The cause is reported to be supply chain issues, as well as inflation. Tampon prices are up roughly 10% from a year ago, while the cost of menstrual pads has risen more than 8% during the same period. I'm sure you recall that just last month, the baby formula shortage shook the nation as parents of infants scrambled to find formula for their children. What is a supply chain issue? A supply chain issue involves a series of steps involved to get a product of service to the customer, including moving and transforming raw materials into finished products, transporting those products and distributing them to the consumer. Multiple complex issues foil the logistics of the supply chain, including the COVID-19 pandemic, which has posed significant challenges for supply chains globally. Multiple national lockdowns continue to slow or even temporarily stop the flow of raw materials and finished goods, disrupting manufacturing as a result. Workers not returning to work and a global shift to online sales are just a few of the reasons why the normal supply chain plan has not been able to keep up with demand. I'll continue to update you about the supply chain issues as they arise. In other news, a German city will allow both women and men to swim topless after a gender identity dispute. The decision came after a swimmer in central Germany who appeared to have female anatomy was asked to cover up while at a local pool. The swimmer informed officials that he identified as male and did not want to cover his chest. To avoid friction, the German city created a new weekend policy where all swimmers may swim topless. Although this weekend initiative is the first public swimming bath in Germany to enable female swimmers to go bare-breasted in the pool, some local residents have said it's not enough, complaining that equality is not just for the weekend. In other news, as the United States faces a decision that could overturn federal protection of access to abortion, feminist leaders are creating ways to stand firm when supporting women's health care needs. Just the Pill, a nonprofit online clinic based in Minnesota, dispenses pills for medication, abortion, birth control, and the treatment of sexually transmitted disease. The organization became a strong advocate for abortion access during the pandemic by offering telehealth appointments and dispensing abortion medication through the mail. In January of 2021, when the U.S. Supreme Court overruled the federal district court, backing the FDA's requirement for all patients seeking abortion medication to visit a medical professional in person instead of by mail, this appeal became mobile, driving to people's homes to dispense the medication. In the event that Roe v. Wade is overturned and the decision to access abortion medication is left up to individual states, just appeal aims to do more than offer birth control. The company has announced a grand goal of securing a fleet of vehicles to run mobile clinics on the borders of every state where abortion remains legal to help bring patients across state lines to access both medical and surgical abortion. Dr. Julie Amon is the medical director of Just Appeal. She grew up in Texas and managed a Planned Parenthood clinic in Austin for four years in the early 2000s. She said, there are a lot of different reasons why people choose not to have kiddos. They have health issues, they're not financially ready, they're not mentally ready. There are so many reasons. And so I think it's important to be able to control your own fertility and control your own body. That's something that has always been super important to me. Well, it's important to me too. Thank you, Julie. Thank you for doing this. Thank you for everything. Well, it's time for a break. Who is the government official who has proclaimed that we are called to be led by men? And what do you do when you believe your children are smart enough to lead themselves? 
We'll explore these two awesome stories after the break. Be right back. Hi, I was a flight attendant for 35 years and then I got lucky enough to invent Finders Keepers. And since that time, in 15 years, we've sold 11 million Finders Keepers. Why? Because Finders Keepers eliminates the dig of looking for your keys. Never throw the keys in your bag. With Finders Keepers, you simply attach the Finders Keepers and then you drop them on your bag. Easy to retrieve and decorate your purse at the same time. You don't carry a purse? No problem. Slip it right onto your waistband. Voila! Finders Keepers. Find us at finderskeepers.com. That's the word finders, the word key, the word purse. Finderskeepers.com. Welcome back. I am T. Erica with the feisty news for women. Girl, guess what? Did you hear about the North Carolina Lieutenant Governor who told a crowd, we are called to be led by men? Girl, yes. Listen, North Carolina Lieutenant Governor Mark Robinson raised more than a few eyebrows when he spoke to the congregation at Freedom House, a multi-campus Christian church in and around Charlotte, North Carolina. Video of his sermon surfaced, showing him telling the crowd, we are called to be led by men. God sent women out when they had to do their thing. But when it was time to face down Goliath, he sent David, not Davida, David. His comments were met with applause by the audience of the church. However, once the footage was released on social media, nearly a month later, he felt the backlash. In a video statement on social media, he responded to their criticism. For someone to insinuate that I don't believe that women can be leaders in their homes, he said, and in their communities and in their churches and in their state and in their nations is absolutely 100 percent ridiculous. The comments that I made at Freedom House Church were directed towards men and encouraging men to stand up and take on the role of leadership, as well as to be leaders in their homes and in their communities, in the state and in, the, in their nation. Hmm. At first glance, I was all ready to dig into Mr. Mark, but I get it. I accept his explanation that he was trying to encourage men to be leaders in our society, and I understand why he felt the need to do that. He knows men need encouragement to be leaders because most men are not leaders, not naturally. They need encouragement to lead. They need someone to push them to lead. But it's not just men that need encouragement. Most people are not leaders, women included. Most people would rather have someone else make decisions for them, someone to go to in times of trouble, someone else to blame when things don't go well. This is exactly why leadership is so important. Most people are not capable of being leaders and most people don't want to be. But men have it worse in our society because they're expected to be leaders by default, when most of the time, leadership is not a part of their character. Leadership is not defined by gender. Leadership is defined by desire and skill. The person who steps up to resolve the problem without being asked to. The person who steps up to make the decision without being asked to. The person who steps up to shoulder the blame and turn the situation around for the betterment of all involved with their willpower is the leader. When men are forced to view themselves as leader by religion or patriarchy, it hurts them so much because a lot of them are going against their nature as supporters. Having capable supporters who thrive while supporting leadership, carrying out the vision of the leader is just as important as having leaders. Yet men are taught that they must be the leader or they're weak. Leaders cannot lead without strong supporters. And not every man or woman is meant to lead. We have to stop forcing this expectation on men and crushing their spirits when they do not live up to this expectation. This speaker, Mark Robinson, was merely trying to inspire men to follow the patriarchal expectations of our society. But you can't, you can't inspire leadership. You can inspire action, but you cannot inspire true leadership because leadership is an instinct to correct, support, and uplift with your bare hands. I'm not angry with you, Mark. Your religion told you that you needed to be the leader and you followed it. 
you're good at being a follower of your religion. But it's not a good idea to train all men to be followers like you are. If you were truly a leader, you would disregard the religious dogma that damages men by demanding leadership from them and instead encourage men to self-determine whether they're more skilled at leading or supporting the leadership of others. Help men find their rightful place, not the role written by the ancients. Help men satisfy their souls instead of defining their worth by expectations set by men who didn't know how to define their own worth. But it's okay. Your message demonstrates that you're trying to be the leader that your religion told you to be. In doing so, you've demonstrated that you are a good follower. Please, allow other men that have the chance to determine where their talents are for themselves. In other news, we're living the feisty life and sometimes creating a path for ourselves that no one we know has ever traveled is hard. You can't be feisty and play it safe all of the time, especially when you feel drawn to do things differently. Let's meet Erica. Erica, what decision did you make for your family that pushed you all to carve out a unique and amazing journey together? Hi, my name is Erica Forrest and I chose to unschool our kids. Unschooling means that it was child-directed learning and it was based on real life experiences. My background is as a teacher and a school administrator, but about 15 years ago, we decided to start homeschooling our oldest child. If it, originally, I was schooling in a traditional sense with me as the teacher, but as the years went by, I realized that I needed to just get out of the way and let them direct their learning. I turned into a, a much more of a facilitator instead of a direct teacher. And schooling means a lot of different things to different families and in every family, it's unique to each child and uh, even every year, every month. What unschooling parents do and what I chose to do is really listen and pay attention to my children what it was that they were wondering about, what they were excited about, what they were frustrated with, what they were trying to understand about themselves and our world. I then helped them find resources that were a good match for their learning style and uh, their abilities at that particular age. And we found lots of real life experiences that helped them discover um, much more about the things they were genuinely interested in. It looked a lot of different ways over the last 15 years. Uh, we included a lot of travel that's often called world schooling. We helped them find mentors and classes, coaches, clubs, activities uh, that they w could choose from if they wanted to do. We spent a lot of time outside of the house. Uh, we were often at museums and workshops, places of other people's employment so that they could see what that was like. Uh, we spent a lot of time out in nature. We found naturalists to work with. Uh, kids did an enormous amount of project-based learning. Uh, they built all kinds of things. They did a lot of cooking and gardening, just an enormous amount of artwork. Um, and they also, a couple of our kids built a video game that won an award. So we helped them launch a business. Uh, we help them with different entrepreneurial opportunities. Our kids chose to take classes, not all unschoolers do, uh, but they were classes that the kids chose and um, they were excited about them. Uh, in a traditional homeschooling environment, usually the parent uh, is in a leadership role and teaching and organizing the child's learning. In unschooling, it is more of a partnership. The child decides what it is that they're interested in, and the parent's role is to facilitate that learning and help them discover what it is they're curious about. After all those years of homeschooling, you might wonder how a child can get into college. Fortunately, a lot of colleges are recognizing uh, the value of having homeschoolers uh, participate in their whole college community. And so most of them have a homeschool track uh, where they look at alternative forms of learning. And you kind of package it all together, everything that they did related to science or related to political science or um, literature, history, whatever it is, you can create a version of it that is uh, easy for colleges to understand. There's actually workbooks and uh, 
people out there who can help with this. Unschooling might sound as if it is not preparing children uh, to enter adulthood, but it's the, the primary focus of what we're doing the entire time that we're raising them, is thinking about who they are as whole people and as adults. It is true that they might not function very well in a job that has a lot of rote activity, unless that's what they really enjoy, but they uh, can take leadership roles in work positions and at school. They're comfortable stepping into volunteering. They're comfortable looking at things from a different perspective. They're comfortable collaborating with other people and looking at things definitely outside of the box. That's what they've been doing all along. Now that our kids are older, after a lifetime of unschooling, they're thriving. Uh, they, our oldest is interested in cybersecurity and they have a keen interest in working with people in underrepresented and uh, controlled societies to help them be able to communicate safely. Our middle child uh, is just about to move to Hawaii to study marine biology. They've got a strong commitment to protecting our planet and our oceans. And our youngest is just about to start an early college program. Yeah, they've got a lot of interests and we'll be excited to see what it is they choose to explore. Unschooling is definitely something for feisty parents and feisty moms. You have to be brave enough not only to withstand what other people might think about you uh, and your choices, but also brave enough to really believe that your kids have it, enough curiosity to learn and be creative on their own. Uh, now that our youngest is about to start early college, I've taken some of the best aspects of unschooling in relation to travel and launched trip scholars. I help curious travelers use their excitement about upcoming trips to learn more about their destinations and themselves. Uh, you can visit tripscholars.com and I'm also happy to take any questions there about unschooling. Erica, that is awesome. So glad you respected the intellect of your children to teach them how to lead themselves and that you created tripscholars.com for those of us who love to learn about the places we plan to visit before we travel. That's pretty awesome. Thanks, Erica. Thank you for watching the Feisty News for Women. I am T. Erica. Remember, be feisty. Women must be seen and heard. Welcome to the Feisty. 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 Welcome to the Feisty. feisty. Erica. Welcome to the Feisty News for Women.